In a previous video from part 1, I was talking about the foundation and growth, expansion, further growth, and rebranding. It was where it all began. How did it form years ago, and how it became the largest airline. There were lots of topics separate to cover up with. If you want to find out why, the video of Cebu Pacific Part 1 presentation is in the link of description. Welcome to Part 2. This second part is all about what happened to Cebu Pacific and it's the last and final presentation on this topic I'm covering. So with that being said, let's begin Part 2. Cebu Pacific served larger passengers around the Philippines and international flights resulting in the airline company's success and becoming the largest airline overtaking rival Philippine Airlines. Not all airline companies have success on other rivals and competitors in different regions. You know what's best to fly a different airline in your own opinion? Hint, don't share it to anyone else outside keep it to yourself already. Let's stick to the main topic. I covered about the foundation and growth, expansion, further growth and rebranding. It's hard to cover up all the topics. This topic in this video is all about what happened to Cebu Pacific. Cebu Pacific is still operational and set to fly in domestic and international locations from main international airport around the Philippines. But things go very bizarre and ridiculous. The airline company has been criticized for overbooking, flight delays and cancellations resulting in the risk of the airline business and dissatisfaction to customers leading to terrible customer service. Some airline companies like Cebu Pacific can run up to problems you'll never know. Some take it well, but others you don't. Let the cat out of the bag. Two problems come up with severe delays, naming misconduct, faulty on an aircraft, weather conditions, etc. Finally, cancellations, customer complaints, losing their flight, refund, or rebooking flights as an alternative route or diversion. But have you ever experienced some severe delays or cancellations if you're on an airplane going on a holiday, moving out, business trip, or return flights? In January 2018, the airline company was marked as the world's least punctual airlines. It was also included on the list on Philippines low-cost airline. Let's make a long story short about how the airline ceased operations temporarily. It started off on February 2nd, 1998. Flight 387 was making a domestic flight from Manila to Cagayan de Oro, setting off the destination from Ninoy Aquino International to Lumbia Airport, carrying 104 people. On board, there were 99 passengers and 5 crew. 
aircraft crashed on the slopes of Mount Sumagaya, eliminating everyone on board. There were no survivors. Searching through the crash site and investigating the truth from what happened, it uncovers the aircraft problem was controlled flight into terrain due to pilot error and poor crew training. This is the footage of the aftermath of Flight 387. Following the next month, Cebu Pacific finally resumed services later for the recertification of its aircraft. The year 2020 was the pandemic. Cebu Pacific was impacted the operations of flights to serve customers. Fortunately, all operations were suspended, which may affect to health while it's traveling. The airline company laid off 1,300 employees that year. The airline company started rehiring retrenched employees in November 2021 as travel demand recovers. March 2022, Cebu Pacific flew its 200 million passengers from Manila to Cebu. December the same year, operated 92% of pre-pandemic levels. The rest resumed in the same year and opened its hub in Pampanga Hub at Clark International Airport. After three consecutive financial years of losses, Cebu Pacific reported its first full year post-pandemic in the same year. On May 16, 2016, Cebu Pacific became a founder member of the world's largest low-cost Korea alliance called Value Alliance. These were the airline companies to consist only of low-cost careers. Cebu Pacific has its own subsidiary called Sebgo. It's also the successor company to Sea Air Inc, which previously operated as Southeast Asian Airlines and Tiger Air Philippines. Before the acquisition, Sea Air was established in 1995 and started operations in the same year. Its franchise was granted by the Congress of the Philippines only on May 13, 2009. Until 2014, Cebu Pacific announced the acquisition of Tiger Air Philippines for 672 million pesos. This is it, 2024, the present year. February 28th was Cebu Pacific awarded the best airline at the Root Asia Awards 2024 for exceptional contributions to airport and destination marketing in the Asia Pacific region. Cebu Pacific is working on for destination marketing is providing to construct advertising which targets audience and customers to a particular place. Instead of focusing on rare products or service where you normally see online on your own external devices or TV adverts or commercials, it brings the unique atmosphere and experiences a specific location provides visitors. Some specific locations include like hotspots or remote getaway locations can give promote travel to desirable places. Some destination marketing can be generated to different branches from service-based companies, naming travel agencies, transportation vehicles, entertainment or public event venues. TV adverts or commercials, local and state government areas including historical sites and parks, and other business companies that can attract potential visitors around the world. 
which is why Cebu Pacific is kicking off forward to focus on the destination marketing to attract customers, to increase the airline business and more. These are the former and current aircraft fleet for Cebu Pacific they're using this year. So this video concludes the presentation about Cebu Pacific, which has a lot of topics to cover to research for the airline company. From where it all began to what happened to the airline business. Thank you all for watching and listening this presentation. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a good night.